can we talk just me and you so the question today is matching but not the usual kind of matching that audio files talk about no I'm talking about the most important matching wall not arm and cartridge turntable matching or impedance matching no something more fundamental than that and the, and the question today is matching your system to your taste in music because I don't care how good a speaker is or an amp is or a preamp or something if it isn't in line with your goals as an audiophile I don't care how many rave reviews it has or your best friend thinks it's incredible if it's not lining up with what you want out of your system well then it's just wrong <laughs> it's not a matter if it's good or bad it's just it's just not a good match which is why this is about <laughs> matching so yeah I gotta tell you the story I had I had this customer when I was a salesman he uh, he wanted Apogee speakers he just loved the idea of Apogees now Apogees were like magnet pans they were planar magnetic speakers or ribbon speakers if you will gets a little fuzzy there but anyway he was he was in love with the with Apogees and he said ah, I gotta get these things and I said you're you you can't your room is really tiny even by New York City standards I don't know 12 by 14 feet at best and you're getting these like six foot tall Apogees it's it's not gonna work but he just he bought them he bought them and he was miserable and you know he was moving them around and well, it wasn't gonna work right it was it was doomed from the start and I, and I hated that and when I was a salesman this was one of the most frustrating things I had to deal with is customers uh, buying the wrong thing and, and knowing it before they bought it and trying to talk them out of it and not succeeding anyway so he bought these speakers he was miserable he should have bought stand mount speakers which is what I think he eventually wound up with but the point is um, what we're really talking about today is matching your goals with what you want your music to sound like so I, I'd have a customer who would come in and he would say I love opera I listen to opera most of the time I would say thank you this is the best because the more uh, single purpose a system is the more it can excel and without even spending a ton of money because if you just wanted to do opera really well or you know dance music really well or Led Zeppelin really well that's comparatively easy it's the, the problem is when you say I wanted to do all these things I want to listen to string quartets and I also want to feel the bass you know pounding through my chest and I also want to play it really really loud when I have parties but I also like to listen really quietly at night so when when people are looking for systems that have completely opposite qualities it's hard so you guys if you're into rock for the place to start not necessarily the place to end but the place to start is with horn speakers Klipsch's JBL's the bigger the better depending on your room size again because you know when you hear live music at a concert remember concerts uh, <clears throat> chances are it's going to be coming out of a big horn system so horns are sort of the natural <laughs> natural way to listen to rock music or any amplified music any kind of dance music any kind of loud public you know p big p stacks of speakers you see at shows and everything they're not all horns but it's a lot of horns out there so having horns at home kind of makes sense so uh, yeah Klipsch JBL <laughs> those are the those are the affordable ones if you're you got some bucks you should check out avant-garde acoustics <laughs> really 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 great but anyway horn speakers for music with dynamics and life and you want to try to recreate as much as possible the sound of live music in your house or your apartment okay so let's say you listen to orche orchestral music you listen to classical music right well to me I would say getting a large speaker a, a panel speaker like a magnapan which can, has a sense of scale to the sound would be probably a good way to start they're big speakers you know they're almost as tall as I am or <laughs> taller so uh, sure they give you a, an orchestra as big as I could imagine you hearing it in your living room now another big speakers well open baffle speakers now you know those <coughs> pure audio project speakers I reviewed about a year ago trio classic 15 something like that I'll show you a picture right now 
they have each speaker has two 15 inch drivers and it's optional is it optional but anyway a horn or a full range uh, mid-range tweeter the, the those four 15 inch drivers the speed and power just wow fantastic and they did scale really really well now but if you were like that guy I referred to earlier and you live in a small apartment or in your house you can only use a really small room yeah get some you know skinny little floor standing speakers or stand mount speakers i've reviewed so many especially stand mount speakers um they work really well in small rooms you sh your speaker size and room size should bear some relationship to each other now if you have a big space you live in a loft and you got 2,000 square feet yeah stand mount speaker is probably not the ideal way to go you know in that case depending on your desires for volume and bass uh, big, spa big spaces uh, sound best with big speakers. So again, there's that matching quality. But in terms of your musical taste and what you want it to be, again, now if you're the kind of person who likes to listen really, really quietly, you're not a loud person, right? You just like music there, and it can be uh, transparent and pure and have some fullness to it, but you're not playing it so loud that you're you just like it that way or you're concerned for your neighbor's <laughs> well-being yeah getting a speak no actually clip speakers uh can play very quietly very very well so yeah i would say uh, even uh the clips rp 600m which is a medium-sized stand mount speaker show it to you now that plays quiet really really well and of course a clips forte cornwalls yes or JBLs. <clears throat> I haven't lived with that many JBLs to make those comparisons. But basically, yes, if you're looking for quiet, I would again actually steer you towards horn speakers. It's classic. Now, if you're into classical music or acoustic music and stuff, a set of LS35As, now that's a sort of a type of small British monitor. Many companies make them. Falcon has a great one. Uh, a lot of different companies offer LS35A, and I will list some. But again, for acoustic music, for for tone, for beauty, and not in a large speaker, yes, LS35As are highly recommended. Now, if you're into, if you want a dual use system for, let's say, home theater and for music, well, of all the speakers that I used uh, that did both really, really well. Easy, easy pick for me, and it is Dyne Audio. When I was reviewing for Home Theater Magazine, I had a Dyne Audio Contour, that was the model of the line, a Dyne Audio Contour system, sometimes with subwoofer, sometimes without, but in any case, it did home theater, you know, wham, bam, high dynamic range movies really, really well, and was also extremely satisfying with music. It, it, it's rare to find systems that do, do both really well. Actually, I would, again, I'm sorry, I have to do it one more time, is horn speakers, because horns are, again, when you're in a movie theater, remember movie theaters? Yeah, movie theaters have behind the screens horn speakers. So horns for home, for home theater also make sense. So yeah, I think what we're trying to do today, summing up, is... Bring, you know, have you thinking about that aspect of finding uh, systems, speakers, electronics, sources uh, that align with your tastes? Now, so, actually, sources, I don't know. I don't think so, really. Uh, turntables, arms cartridges, or DACs. Mm, I wouldn't say that any of them are particularly, uh, you know, adept at certain genres of music. Mm. No, not really. Now, of course, if you're into loud, well, then you're going to need power. You're going to need a big amp. Depending on how loud and how big your room is, the more watts, the better. That's pretty easy. That's pretty straightforward. And, of course, if you're not into loud, well, then, you, then your options include great-sounding, low-powered amplifiers. Now, of course, you guys probably have picked up on the fact that I'm a big fan of first-watt amplifiers. Nelson Pass's designs that are 20 watts or so, sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more. Great amps. Great on even speakers that aren't super sensitive. 
even, even with speakers that aren't highly sensitive. And then again, there's the 2.2 watt little Deckware amplifier that I'm using. That amp is so wonderful, so engaging when listened to at low to moderate volumes. And with the right speakers, it can even play pretty loud. But the point is, uh, if you're a low power listener, if you enjoy listening to music quietly or you know moderate volume levels, exploring uh, what can be done with low power amplifiers is highly recommend. Now, of course, I should have said this earlier, <laughs> but if you want to play everything, you want to play loud, you want to play quietly, you want to play opera, you want to play chamber, you should try, where possible, to have more than one system. If you live in a house, it's probably easier to do. Uh, and if you can't have more than a system in, in different rooms for different types of music, will then have at least two pairs of speakers. One for the, the big heavy duty stuff where you need the, the visceral feel and another set of speakers to do the more quieter, you know, let's say introspective music. Anyway, it's a horses for courses, as they say, right? It's about matching. It's about matching to your needs. And I'm, I'm gonna try to pay more attention to when I do, especially speaker reviews, talk about that. I think I do it all the time, but maybe I'm not being explicit enough about saying this speaker is ideal for this type of music, this, these genres, you know. I'll work on that. So, so wrapping up, <laughs> my name is Steve Guttenberg. This continues to be the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Uh, if you like it, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, if you have already subscribed, thank you so much for being there and doing that. I appreciate it. And of course, you could uh, also check out my Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac, and I will link to that below. Uh, and I'm also uh, pitching lately the free music that I'm offering uh, well, record companies are offering, and I'm telling you about it, from Chesky Records and MA Recording to American audiophile labels. And they put together these samplers. Chesky did one sampler, MA has done two. I'll probably try to get some other labels to do the same. But for now, it's those two labels. And I made videos, and I will link to those videos describing those samplers below. What else? Well, there's playlists. We got playlists for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and amplifier reviews and, of course, music reviews and interviews. Interviews with the legends of the industry. I will rattle off a few right now. Nelson Pass, uh, Andrew Jones, uh, John Atkinson from Stirfile Magazine, Eric Alexander. Many, 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 many. I don't know. 70, 80 interviews. Check them out. And now I can say my work here is at last complete. So thank you again for watching, and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.